Good morning, evening, or afternoon, depending on where you are. I am at this street. What is, what is this street called? I forgot the name of this Glen street. Road. Glen Road? Yeah. Glen Road. I'm at Glen Road. Oh, I, for, I forgot to pull down my mask for a second there. And I am with my friend Nick. Mm. And this is my first time doing a YouTube video walk with a friend. And we're going to go up towards Rosedale. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Yes. And yeah, that's going to be our walk. But now I have to do the pull up my phone because I don't remember what day or time it is. Now you have to do it in French. Yeah, right? That would be a chaotic mess. Um, that would be a federal government meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it is Wednesday, February 9th, and it is now 1.47 p.m. There we go. It's a balmy three degrees Celsius. And my, my phone said it was five. Well, it probably is. I regret wearing my winter coat. Yeah, I didn't put on a sweater underneath, but I felt like the coat would keep me hopefully warm enough. This is a cool tunnel. I don't know how I feel about this tunnel. I feel like in the summer, it would smell like urine. I'm sure it would. And sometimes people will sleep in here because I mean it is shelter. Yeah. Oh, look at all the DoorDash stickers back there on the ground. It's where the DoorDash delivery people sleep in here. So this bridge is apparently being taken down. What? This year. And what I heard is it would likely be under construction for another two years afterwards, but I I don't know. I think that's just... Why are... It is Toronto infrastructure, so these things take time. Why... why I mean, if Jump. you... Like, this bridge is about to fall apart. Yeah, this doesn't feel very safe. The first time I moved to this neighborhood, I got about halfway across, and then it started bouncing and I ran away. That's... This is kind of scary. I mean, we're standing over the Rosedale Valley. So in the summer, that's the valley. It was telling me that I was I was riding a bike down, or sorry, my scooter down the valley. No, we were in a car. We were in Rob's, Rob's car, car, and we saw a naked guy. And then I always like tell people about the the story of the naked guy down here, and apparently he's quite famous. There are people that live around the un overpasses or underpasses, I suppose. Yeah. So you know, Rosedale is not named after anyone. No, it's named after the flower. Like wild roses that used to grow here that were once native. And I have not seen a wild rose grow anywhere. <laughs> In Toronto. <laughs> yeah. That's no longer a thing. I think like the uh, the Adrian Clarkson lives like around here. She does with her husband. Now do you know what to call her if we see her? What do we call her? Yeah, what do you call like an ex-governor general? I think we have a name. Like, do we just call her the ex? The ex. Are you Googling the name of the... Yeah. <laughs> you never know, we have to be polite. Uh, apparently like the average um, house price around here is 1.7. But I mean, that's been climbing ever since. I feel that's the average house price of the... everything in Toronto at the moment. But I mean, I've also seen houses in this area go as high as 25 million. Jeez. 25 million for like, how, how? The, the 25 very million big. one was for like a five bedroom. It was a historical property. So it wasn't like bridal path then, was it? No, it wasn't bridal path opulence, but I mean for a five or six bedroom house. And I mean, this used to be considered the suburbs a hundred years ago. Right, but yeah. Now, I mean, you can walk to the downtown here without much issue. Like, look at how beautiful these houses are. And a lot of Georgian houses. That sort of classic red brick. Whoa. It's not Romanesque. Go ahead. We're, we're stymied by this. Someone's garbage and recycling right in the middle of the sidewalk. But Eddie, it's upper class garbage. It's constructive. We're going to, like, dig through it and find gold bars. <laughs> it's like, ugh, I don't want these anymore. They don't look good in the credenza. <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask you if you bought someone on meter. Like, I wonder how much it is to rent in one of these, like, low-rises. I don't know, but I know that the units go around for 7 or 8, but some as high as 1.1 or 1 Wow. And I was here sometime after the big snowstorm. None of the sidewalks were shoveled, but all the driveways were. Of course. Healthy <laughs> <laughs> your drive.
Where's the other bridge? This way. Do you want to go over that one? Yeah, because that leads to like the northern part of Rosedale, right? Where that... Shortly Park. Yeah, where that's where the our mansion used to be. I think it was the former home of the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. And they tore that down sometime in the 1960s. Because it was too costly to keep it, right? It's the city didn't want to pay. <laughs> yeah. And if you look at it, I mean, compared to a lot of European countries, Canada doesn't have a lot of official residences. Mm, right. I, mean, I think like the last lieutenant governor that we had in Ontario, no official residence, just his home somewhere in Mississauga. Bet he got some nice upgrades to that house though. Sure. But I mean, even our prime minister doesn't live in his official residence. What, what is the, the official residence called again? 24 Sussex. Sussex, right, yes. Um, it used to belong to my family. <laughs> like your generational family, not Like the, the Edwards ancestors. Ah. And then the government said, I, I, we want this. And my ancestors said no. And then they died. So the government took it. Gosh, I should be a government and I'll just be like, I want that house. <laughs> Fluffy dog. Now I have looked inside that house on that 3D for sale platform that they have on Realtor.ca. Which house? That one there. The one with the um, pillars. Why does that look like an upgraded version of the Home Alone house? <laughs> it does. Oh, geez, like, the funny thing is it looks incredibly impressive on the outside, and it is on the inside too, but it's shockingly small for something that looks like, because I mean it doesn't go that far back. Oh, you're right, it's not that deep. Oh, because it looks like one of those old like farmhouses, because look at the shape from the side. It's like oh a, yeah, you're with the roof, it does. It's like almost like a barn, but two million dollars. The Right Honorable. The Right Honorable. Adrian Clarkson. Because she's not the left honorable, she's the right. She's the right. She's the very right. Oh, Elm Avenue. So it's not quite Elm Street, so there's no nightmares here. Oh, this is still Glen Road. We're still on the same street. sort of the ironic bus stop. The bus stop in the neighborhood where everyone drives. Yeah, I was gonna ask about that. I can't imagine. I guess people who work here. Who, who work, work here for the, for the people who own yeah. yeah. Do you imagine at one time, way before we even existed, these houses were probably considered affordable? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is where Mr. Bell is buried. <laughs> this is tombstone. It, oh my gosh. It doesn't look like a random tombstone in the middle of the street. What is that? I mean, there was a time when the old neighborhood I used to live in was considered cottage country. And now you can take the subway there. Yeah, that's right. Like, he, I, the reason why the roads here are so twisty is because back in the day it was like all horse trails. Yeah. So it was usually like the path of least resistance where there weren't trees and things like that. I hadn't thought about that, but you're absolutely right. Yeah, because even if you if you look at Google Maps, like it, it's it looks like a jumble of roads. Like it looks like there's no logic. Well, I guess in that sense, not living in a suburban grid is kind of a luxury. Yeah, true. So your neighborhood is old enough to predate cars. Look at how many cars are just in people's driveways. It's that one looks like a plantation and it's creeping me out. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's like the Back to the Future clock tower at the top. It's the clock tower. What happens if we accidentally run into Peggy? We say hi and then she sneers and remembers the time that I already caught her. I think you're a stalker. The this next time you run into Margaret Atwood. <laughs> the same camera he's following me when i first got this camera like four years ago three years ago i was testing it out on u of t grounds and i was just like doing a pan film 
and I noticed like this woman was like scowling at me and then I didn't realize later it was Margaret Atwood. And I was it still like turn? They do have a stop sign. We were wondering if we were gonna get smushed. Oh, there's a park there. I feel like we'll see it from this bridge. Yeah. Not only did you start filming the woman who was scowling at you, you then zoomed in. <laughs> I made it, <laughs> it worse. Was very clear. <laughs> I just the, the, my reaction to certain situations always makes the situation worse. I don't I don't know how to react <laughs> appropriately. It's a very modern looking house. I don't like it. Yeah. Next to like a TTC electric station. <laughs> That's what it looks like one of those substations. It does. It's that style of like 50s architecture. It's oh, this is nice with the big windows. True, but I'm pretty sure this is a new build. New is in like like 1980s. Yeah. And not the 1890s. Because it's from the 1980s. It's only wonder. Wow. I think we're still on Glen Road. Is this the bridge that divides um, Rosedale North from South? I guess so. Yeah, it must be. Because it said Glen Road Bridge, but I feel like there's another Glen Road Bridge. Isn't the one we crossed Glen Road? That was the Glen Road footbridge. This is oh. oh, I hear it's a DC bus coming. Let's see if there's like absolutely no one on it. <laughs> one person. <laughs> That's too bad. Like, it's a complete waste of it. Well, I shouldn't say that because I, I haven't seen it at Russia. There may be people that actually take this bus to get through uh, to the neighborhood in the fifth year, which is still very pricey. To get a shot of the ravine. Imagine owning that house right there, like right on the edge of the ravine. I've looked at houses there and some of the new condos that they built right on the edge of the ravine and I'd just be paranoid they'd fall into it one day. <laughs> You're just gonna wake up and your bed's gonna slide down to like the other side of the room. You never know. I mean, look at all those trees that have fallen down. All the soil that's eroded. Yeah, look at how all the trees are kind of slanted in towards the valley. Is that or the ravine. house over there? Where, like, that's kind of peeking over up. there, that super modern looking thing. I think so. I know it's in this neighborhood, and it was built by like a textbook magnate, and was then used for a bunch of like filming episodes. That's sad. That must mean someone must have died here. This is actually really peaceful looking though. It is. This is a view of the city that you don't normally get. To the point that I can't identify any of the buildings that I'm looking at because I've never seen. I think that's Branksome Hall, the private girls' school, at the end of the ravine there. But isn't that on the other side of the road? Yeah, no, that's like down that's, that way. That, that's Summer Hill, isn't it? Yeah, so or I think Mount it's Pleasant. Mount Pleasant. We're trying to figure out what like that building is. There's a trail down there. You can see little tracks. Yeah, so that's the trail. If you go down Milkman's Lane, which is just like. Milk there-ish yeah like it's somewhere over there it'll bring you down it brings you like right see where that fence is like mm -hmm. right against that fence and then there's a little bridge you can cross which i guess you'd see from the other side of this and would that be the overpass that's the floor the floor the I got. yeah so yeah you could take this trail so it splits when you come down and one way leads to the brickworks Oh, right. And the Brickworks and Mount Mount St. Pleasant Cemetery, Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Right. If you keep going there. And this one kind of goes towards like the, uh, um, I, I forget those name of the parks, but it like hits those parks just on the other side of Young. Oh, I'd have to look at them. No, like north of Ramston, like, uh, Did you no, sorry, it stops at Bayview, not Young, sorry. Is this somewhere where you and Rob went on your little cycle journeys last summer? No, this is one I went on a... Well, there's no really like a decent bike trail down that way. No. Like it's just mud. Uh, no, I've gone on walks down there before. I tried to take Coda there when she was a puppy, but uh, she only walked like part of it and I needed to be carried, so... So we will be going there this summer. Yeah. Well, she has more energy now. 
Yeah, it's like this weird, like the black house, like there, like right on the hill. But it looks. Or is it that's just like a garage? No, no, I'm pretty sure that's. It's either a house or it's a massive extension to the yellow brick house. Yeah. Or to the stone house there. So you know that house looks spooky. I like it. Looks like the houses that I grew up in. Were they all haunted too? I don't know, maybe. To do a seance and find out. No, let's not. Yeah, like it looks like this house has the same entrance and someone's, someone's coming out. No, separate house. We should like interview them about their house. I think that would be very intrusive. <laughs> very, very much. Do you want to go to Charlie Park and look for remnants of the big house they tore down? Yeah, I'm curious about that. I wonder if there's anything left behind. No. You know, because if you go to Trinity Bellwoods Park, you can kind of see like the dip where Trinity Bellwoods used to be. Yeah. Or Trinity Church, Trinity College, there yeah. we go. Where they moved up to the main St. George campus. Yeah. But it's kind of weird. Like I can't visualize that giant college being there in that park. This is why I really enjoy the Toronto archives and the fact that you can filter by which photos are available online. Ah, uh, yes. Because, I mean, this, Toronto has changed a lot. This house looks a bit more modest. <laughs> it's, it's a massive corner lot. The air conditioner units still in the window are still. It doesn't have, like, central air in there? That's... You know, this was a mistake. It looks like... Something I'll never be able to afford, but it looks like a really tacky castle. Like it's... Because it's not impressive enough to be a nice castle. So it's sort of... But as you say, we'll never be able to afford it. So... No. Oh, someone's moving in or out of that one. Oh, I've been getting ads for that. Pods. You sort of move everything into the pod at your own speed, and then they pick it up for you. Oh, really? That's that's kind of smart. Yeah, actually, I think it's a great idea. This is more my speed. <laughs> There's a, <laughs> like a building permit. <laughs> Well, back when I lived in the annex, there was a building very similar to that, and only one old man lived inside of it, and it just sort of was decaying, and I came back ten years later, and it had been completely renovated. Wow. It turned into a multi-million dollar, like, cut-up condo. Do you think he died and his family sold it? Oh, he absolutely did die. <laughs> So he died in, did you know he died in the house or like... A lot of people on that street on Madison Avenue just end up dying in their homes. Yeah. Because they live alone and have lived there for the last 70 years. And I guess the caregivers probably find them. Half of the time they don't have caregivers. Oh, so you just find like a decayed body. Yep. Oh. The little stories that I pick up chatting with neighbors back where I used to live. And of course the house isn't purchased because someone accidentally let slip that someone died in it. Yeah. And in the huge influx of buyers from overseas that don't like that. No, because that's that's uh, is, uh, unlucky. Bad luck, yeah. yeah. Bad I think it's lucky. Someone died, there's a vacancy, get it cheap. Yep. I don't know, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me either. So long as I'm not sleeping in the exact same bed that they were in, it's fine. Yeah, like I imagine you'd throw out all the furniture. Yeah. Like, ooh, what's this giant brown spot on the mattress here? <laughs> is this the park? No. This, this is, is one of them. It's a little park cat. Adrian. Adrian. She, like, walks out of her house riding a horse. We're from CBC Newsbeat. What are your <laughs> thoughts on the protesters? Oh, God, they're, they're moving here. They're moving here. That's what she says on horseback. Oh, God, they're moving here, and she gallops away. <laughs> She just heads north. <laughs> I've been in the Arctic. It's much better there. I'm going to write a book about it. There were these old ads. So I don't know if they were like, if they were there while you were at U of T, but it was like, 
promoting the stacks, like at Robarts, the, the stacks where you're going to get the books. Yeah. And it was like famous U of T alumni in the stacks, and it's like, Margaret Atwood is in the stacks, and it's like her head is poking out from between the shelves. <laughs> and then there was one for like Adrian Clarkson. And it's just like, it, it was just so creepy looking. Just the way they're like poking out in between the stacks, it was like they're stalking you. <laughs> Like Margaret Atwood cruising in the stacks. It's, it's, it's like stranger things have happened. Margaret, where are you in the health sciences life? I have a gash, I'm getting it treated. <laughs> Wanna see? No, Margaret, no! And then it's like treating it with like slugs and lemon juice. Margaret Atwood could lift up her dress and bats would fly out. <laughs> Oh god, I hope she never finds my channel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Margaret Atwood knows how to use a YouTube. Is that a church or is that... It's probably a church for now, but... I can see it being turned into residences. This is a really cute, underused really park. Nice. It's gonna go right here. But what's with the flowers on the bench? Are this like memorials? Yeah. There's a little plaque. To yeah. I mean, it's a cute way to pay homage or to remember someone yeah. who passed away when you have money to be able to do that. Eddie, when you die, I'm going to dedicate a nice park bench to you. Perfect. I'll have to think of which park. No, no, no. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Last time I was here, I wasn't like looking around because someone it was just a group of us when we were chatting the whole time. I'm glad to be able to come back here. Yeah, where's the um, the yeah, I think historic park? We can either go up one and turn. Yeah, let's go up one and turn around. Yeah, it's up and right or down here. Yeah. But there's no way to get over the snow. Yeah, because it's not accommodating for people who are walking. Like, this is just like really interesting architecture because you don't see these kind of like roofs. Uh, I don't want to know, is it, is, it, is it ranch style? I don't want to say that. You'd be wrong. I don't know. I was thinking something like that, like like ranch or, or it's very common in uh, like California, like New there. Mexico housing. Yeah. Like very low buildings that are spread out. Yeah. of the person at the worst he was named after? Yeah, it's like the most unflattering, scary photo in the world. Like, terrifying. It looks like a movie villain. It looks like something out of like Disney's Haunted Mansion. Yep. Yeah, Joseph Bloor or something yeah. like that, yeah. Is it this road? Yeah. Oh, there's a dog walker with two puppies. Yeah. Okay, now that one over there looks like the Home Alone house. Like which? The Home Alone House. Where is the Home Alone House? Isn't it like Connecticut or some Pennsylvania? Uh, Wichita, uh, Illinois. So just yeah. a suburb of Chicago. And it's really funny because like, as a kid I thought like, oh yeah, that's like a normal house. Mm -hmm. Not realizing, no, it's a freaking mansion. Yeah. And it looks like the plumbing, like the Marvin Harry's little truck. <laughs> Yeah, this park. It's hard to tell where does the park start, where does the property end. 
feel like this is just the corner of the park itself. Oh, they still have their Christmas decorations up and it's February. <clears throat> yeah, because this is the park, isn't it? Well, I mean, it extends. It wraps around. Let's see. see, this is the part of Toronto where you could have a swimming pool in your backyard and it wouldn't be gross. Yeah. Anywhere else in the city, it would just be disgusting and likely full of rats. So how do we get to Chorley Park? Let's cross here. Okay. You know where this is actually not too, too far from? My old landing. Well, if we kept walking further this way, uh, we'd be close to Leaside to uh, Mallory Crescent. What's there? That is where that uh, infamous house is where uh, Bruce MacArthur stored the bodies. Oh! Yeah. That's not there. Well, I, I don't want to, like, I want to re respect the privacy because <coughs> the people that own it still live there, so. I know someone that knows the owners. Oh, that's that's such a terrible thing to have happen to your home. The dog's missing a leg. <gasps> a tripod. This is again like a super underused park. If you were to go with any other park in Toronto, it'd be so crazy. So would it have been there? Because there's like a foundation, I think. Yeah, and it's kind of a weird kind of like indent in the land. You think that was the bridge to go over the cross? Maybe, but from photos I've seen of that the house, it was wide. Yeah, it was wide and really huge. Oh yeah, this is a really uh, underused park. It's really nice though. My friend proposed to his girlfriend here. Last oh, one. That's cute. Oh, last one is so recent. It was very recent. Was it during the snowstorm? <laughs> Imagine that. It's he like dropped that. the ring and he couldn't find it. I can't hear you. There's snow blowing in my ear. <laughs> Why are you leaning down? Are you hurt? <laughs> I feel like that's significant. Like, like across what, the creepy bridge? Yeah, I mean, the trail leads there. And there's a plaque over there, too, at the bench, so we can check that out. Oh, right, yeah, there's a plaque over there. That's where we can end the walk we get to that plaque, hopefully the people will be gone from there, so yeah. they're not suddenly on YouTube. Yeah, like, this is definitely, like, some weird foundation. It says no winter maintenance. Yeah, this is really cool. I've never been in this park. No, neither have I. Really irritate the people over there by just peering over the railings and looking into their backyards. Right? They seem to have like a network of trails. Yeah, I see that. Well, I wonder who owns a lot of the <clears throat> backyards of the places that go against the ravine. The government might one day, yeah. if they can just like take a house like that. The dog. I wonder if it's three legs. I think this was where it was right here. Because if you think about it, the cars would have pulled off the uh, moving and driven over this bridge and then into the property right in front of us. Maybe that plaque will inform us. Careful, there's dog poop everywhere. Yeah, I just feel like it, when it snows, people like get lazy or something. Oh, they absolutely do. But it's weird because like 
when they snow, it's so much easier to see the poop. Like as a dog owner, like I like I'm like yeah, I can actually see it while I'm picking it up, you know. Though around here, it's hard to tell what's poo, what's pine cone. Yeah. There we go, there's a photo of it. Oh yeah, so there's a little bridge. So so this is where we were, right? Like here? Yeah, and so... So this is here, so this actually would have been like here, I'm guessing. Because that was the bridge to that little area with that trees in the middle and the houses were here. I think. Oh wow, it would have been so epic. Like, look at the ballroom. A typical sort of Gilded Age mansion. And because here you can see it like abutted the ravine, so this would have been part of the walls of the tree. Ah, yes. You can see it like how it kind of like jets out there and goes around yeah. to that little bridge. Because that, that was, so this right here, like how it curves out like that, is actually that curve right there. Yeah, because we literally just walked out across and then walked to the plaque, and the plaque is like right here. Because mm -hmm. we went, ch -ch -ch. yeah. So the house grounds here would be like here then. And now it's a park. I like that it's a park, but I would have loved to have visited the uh, well, they should have government house. <clears throat> turned it into like a Casaloma kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny to think about it because it was torn down, wouldn't it say, like in the 60s or the 30s? In 1960 is when it was torn down. Yeah, Casaloma could have suffered the same fate, right? Because it That's was also true, yeah. pretty derelict back then for like... Because I think they turned it into a hotel in the 20s and 30s and then it just like no one used it for like decades after. Mm. Yeah. Um, now to end the walk. In this, it's actually quite a busy park in terms of like all the dog walkers it is. around. <clears throat> but oh, there's a pretty view of the ravine behind me, and Nick is there. Wait, bye. 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 I hope you enjoyed this walk from your bed, your couch, your desk, wherever you're watching it from. And until next time, bye. <laughs>